in their bank accounts. Unfortunately, we have been a country all these years where people would not like to risk their money as, as that is the psyche with uh, the people around into equities. So what we try to suggest people is that let us do something that the money will be into some efficient instrument, maybe a debt uh, debt kind of an instrument. Say I have my money in the savings account. Now savings account would generate me a return which starts from 4% by and large to a return at the maximum would be around 6% in some of the banks. So somewhere if I can generate a return which is better than that, that's one. Secondly, it is a tax efficient route of generating that return. It makes a lot of sense. Then the moment I am done with that kind of a thing, then I develop a certain amount of confidence in the system that, okay, that KYC is not something which is very difficult. Mm. Then I can generate return on, say, maybe something like a mutual fund, which is a debt-based mutual fund. And then I would slide into equities. Okay, see, but that's the thing. A lot of, uh, you know, a lot of experts have come on this show and said debt-based mutual funds are exactly like fixed deposits. But that's not entirely true. There is an element of risk that comes with a debt-based mutual fund as well which doesn't come with my bank account, or doesn't come with a fixed deposit. Explain to us what that risk is. Uh, basically, uh, one needs to look into uh, that any with the net asset value, the moment somebody invests into uh, a mutual fund, there would be a statement written that it is subject to market moments and all those things. When somebody reads all those things, he gets a little disturbed. But one needs to look into that what is the underlying asset that I'm investing into. If the underlying asset which I am investing into are AAA rated bonds, are government securities, then despite it being a net asset value based kind of a thing, I should not worry about it because up or down, uh, at the end of the tenure which I am looking at, maybe a period of two years, three years or whatever, I would be getting a return which is the return on those underlying assets. Mm. So the construction of the mutual fund as an investment avenue is such that it gives a shaky kind of a effect. But if somebody probes a little into it and goes that what are the underlying assets, it should matter to somebody. And to add to that, somebody should look at the history, you know, that uh, say what is a three-year return, what is a five-year return, what is a one-year return. Then that would bring confidence that uh, I, I don't, uh, will, I might not lose money. So are you convinced?